Flight 5 in four weeks. Musk's tweet has teased Starship's fifth test launch in early August, approaching very close. This promises to be the most spectacular launch yet, unlike anything we've seen before. So, what makes it so different? What upgrades have they implemented to ensure this leap forward? Let's find out in today's episode. Why is Flight 5 so different? To understand this, let's rewind Starship's test flights to see the unique milestones SpaceX achieved for each launch. The first flight had a humble beginning. IFT-1 lasted a mere four minutes before ending in a spectacular mid-air explosion. SpaceX lost the vehicle, and the launch pad suffered heavy damage. However, they cherished the lessons learned, seeing them as a crucial measure of success. It was just the very first step of an epic journey. Unwavering, they forged ahead with preparations for the next flight. A water deluge system was installed to tame the extreme heat from rocket engines at liftoff, shielding the launch pad. They also ramped up Starship's engines faster during liftoff to minimize pad damage. The hydraulic system gave way to an electric thrust vector control system, isolating each engine to prevent cascading Raptor failures. Crucially, they updated flight control software with hard-won data from IFT-1, boosting performance and safety for the next attempt. So, how was Flight 2? IFT-2 roared for eight minutes, successfully separating stages and piercing the sky. Starship unleashed a powerful launch with all 33 Raptor engines blazing and nailed the stage separation. However, a clogged liquid oxygen filter caused the booster to fail, and both stages were eventually lost. They did not reach all the goals, but they successfully proved the might and reliability of the Raptor engine. So it can be said that the improvements after Flight 1 had paid off. They kept moving forward, gathering information, learning, and improving relentlessly. They tackled fuel line slosh and filter blockage, fortified hardware against leaks and fires, and fine-tuned flight software with IFT-2 data. These enhancements absolutely bore fruit in IFT-3. Starship completed the full second stage burn for the first time, hitting orbital velocity. Though the Super Heavy booster was destroyed at 462 meters above the Gulf of Mexico, and the upper stage didn't survive, they were very close. They lost the vehicle but nearly clinched it, a pivotal milestone. After Flight 3, we knew starships could fly, so they came for the next challenge, returning the vehicle to Earth intact. SpaceX, as after every test, dug into the data, investigated issues, and refined Starship's hardware. They beefed up fuel filters to eliminate contaminants in liquid oxygen lines, bolstered the booster with added stringers, and decided to jettison the hot staging ring to slash booster mass, and they finally made it. IFT-4 nailed its Mayan objectives, with both stages splashing down in the ocean in a controlled manner. This Crucial flight yielded a treasure trove of data, with both stages returning in one piece. At last, Starship proved its ability to come home. SpaceX even simulated a catch with a virtual tower, laying the groundwork for their most audacious Starship flight yet, the upcoming Flight 5. Each past flight conquered different milestones, showcasing ambitious research and relentless improvement. But Flight 5 stands apart. It aims to be the first step to lay the foundation for Starship's reusability era. SpaceX plans to bring the booster back to the ground on the Mechazilla arm. Indeed, before IFT-4, Elon Musk boldly declared that if all went well, SpaceX would aim to catch the Super Heavy booster with the launch tower in Flight 5. This confidence is not unfounded. And from that moment, Starbase seems to never sleep, with engineers tirelessly working to repair and upgrade the launch tower. Notably, a critical test took place on June 26th to ensure the reliability and success of the booster recovery process. Booster 14.1, a specialized 11-ring tall test article, was equipped with unique lift points to simulate interactions between the booster and tower arms. These points must bear the full load and weight of the booster during landing, making the pressure simulation and testing vital for ensuring the ability to withstand dynamic forces and related pressures after mission completion. During tests with Booster 14.1, SpaceX meticulously examined the mechanical precision of the chopsticks system. Tower arms are equipped with a special rail system and shock absorbers to absorb impact forces during booster capture. With an impressive weight of about 80 tons, the movement of these arms generates a significant inertial force that could affect the booster. To address this challenge, engineers conducted numerous tests, continuously adjusting the arm's closing and opening motion. A released video showcases the testing process focusing on the left arm, suggesting they're testing hardware upgrades on this arm before applying improvements to the other. Based on Elon Musk's confident timeline, we can infer that these tests have yielded promising results, providing invaluable data for the engineering team. These advancements bring us closer to a historic moment in the space industry. The Mechazilla arms will extend to welcome the big bad boy booster from the sky in what promises to be the most epic hug ever witnessed. Many hypotheses and concerns have been raised within the community about the mission's chances of success. Why worry? No need to. Let's examine the technical factors and structural elements involved. 
When we talk about landing the booster, we're dealing with a structure that has completed its primary mission and is returning in its most basic state, essentially an empty can with a steel shell about four millimeter thick. While some internal hardware remains, most of the fuel has been expended. In contrast, the launch tower is an incredibly robust and durable structure. In the worst case scenario, a fire might occur, but it's unlikely to cause severe damage to the tower. Remember the collapse of the World Trade Center Twin Towers on 9-11? I don't mean to evoke painful memories, but it provides a useful example of structural failure mechanisms. The building's collapse wasn't solely due to the impact, but primarily because the impact allowed the jet fuel to disperse throughout the structures. The extreme heat from the large amount of burning fuel weakened the steel structure of the building, leading to their collapse. In the case of the SpaceX launch tower, even if an incident occurs and fire breaks out, the fuel remaining in the booster is limited. This won't be sufficient to cause severe damage to the tower's structure. Moreover, unlike a sealed building, the launch tower is an open structure, allowing flames and heat to dissipate rapidly. This design facilitates easier control of any incidents and minimizes impact on the tower's main structure. Of course, there might be some damage to cables and auxiliary systems, but this is an inevitable part of the development and testing process. We can trust SpaceX's ability to manage and overcome these challenges. But that's just the worst-case scenario. Let's not forget the proactive measures in place. If the SpaceX team detects any issues that could compromise the mission, they'll swiftly adjust the booster's trajectory, directing it towards the Gulf for a soft landing, much like what we witnessed in the fourth test flight. As we stand on the cusp of this historic attempt, the anticipation is palpable. Will we witness the most epic hug as the Mechazilla arms gracefully catch the returning booster? Or will we see another demonstration of a soft landing, or a fiery explosion at the launch tower? Each outcome promises to be nothing short of spectacular, worthy of our eager anticipation. SpaceX's focus extends beyond mere booster improvements. They've implemented crucial upgrades to Starship's upper stage, all in pursuit of a triumphant fifth flight. The most noteworthy enhancement? A complete overhaul of the heat shield system. The new shield boasts materials twice as durable as its predecessor, complemented by an additional ablative layer beneath, a formidable backup defense system. Imagine the Herculean task of manually removing and reinstalling 18,000 tiles, a labor-intensive endeavor demanding substantial time and manpower. Yet SpaceX made this monumental decision on short notice, showcasing their unwavering determination and the breakneck pace of their testing process. This bold move offers a fascinating glimpse into SpaceX's mindset. They've come to terms with the inevitability of some tiles detaching during flight at this stage, hence the necessity of a secondary protective layer. This strategic approach implies we might witness heat shield tiles falling away as we did in Flight 4. However, the crucial difference lies in the protective measure. The bare steel underneath won't directly face the hellish plasma, ensuring the spacecraft's integrity remains intact. Diving into the technical realm, the enhanced durability of the new material likely stems from a revolutionary shift in the heat shield tile composition. Previous analyses have unveiled a complex interplay of components in a heat shield tile, including silica fibers, alumina borosilicate, and aluminum oxide. Elon Musk himself has previously let slip that the tiles are crafted from silicon and aluminum oxide. The game-changing improvement may lie in the reinforcement of this material mix with larger diameter alumina fibers, significantly boosting the tile's resilience. While this change makes each tile slightly heavier, the increase in durability and heat resistance is impressive. Many improvements were made, decisively and swiftly. The progression from IFT-1 to IFT-4 demonstrated that their relentless efforts consistently led to results surpassing the achievements of previous flights. With the track record of history, we can believe they will achieve their ambitious goals in Flight 5. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.